Shabbat Shalom. If thank you is our first and best prayer, it seems like that is the place to start. So Jason, thank you. Thank you for your invitation to be here this evening and to share with you in this very special time and Shabbat service. I am more than honored. And more than that, thank you for your friendship and your faith and for the journey we have shared together. And Congregation Beth Israel, thank you. Thank you for your welcome and for your hospitality in having me be here with you this evening and to have a few moments to share with you some thoughts and reflections. I believe it matters. Probably like yours, our home is filled with pictures. Curious about how many we have up on walls and in frames on bookcases. One morning when my wife wasn't around, I went around to count. I stopped when I got to 200. (laughs) And that doesn't count the digital picture frame that's in our living room with rotating pictures every 15 seconds. But what caught my attention as I looked through all of those pictures again was a scrap of paper my wife had found and hung above a grouping of pictures that is at the top of the staircase. It reads, the picture is only half the story. I invite you to think about that for a moment. For me, at least, and maybe also for you, the pictures in our home reach back or down and pull up to the present both wonderful and poignant moments. Some capture those everyday moments that add up to a lifetime, like the picture of our son when he was five or six years old, standing with his foot on a soccer ball and a huge grin on his face or the picture of us standing in front of the ocean, arms wrapped around each other, watching the waves. And some of the pictures are more poignant. The picture of our oldest son holding his son for the first time. Or the picture taken after our whole family had gathered and been able to have dinner together, kind of a rare occurrence for our family because My wife and I and our family always live some distance from where I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but here was this picture of all of us after dinner. And it was the last time that we were able to gather as a family before my father passed away. The picture is only half the story. The rest, the important part, tells the story of our lives, what we remember and reminders of who we are and what we value, and of those transformative moments that shaped and continue to shape who we are. Why am I sharing all of this with you? Because there are actually pictures being taken this evening, but right here, right now, might be one of those moments for you to pause and take a mental snapshot, if you will, of what this evening is and who is here. Look around. Seriously, look around. Here you are. Together again, after being apart for so long, congregants and friends here in a beautiful sanctuary which holds its own fair share of memories and in which prayers spoken, whispered long ago, echo still, gathered to celebrate the installation of your new senior rabbi and this, a Presbyterian pastor, a Christian minister, standing before you on the bima having been asked to deliver this evening's reflections. I don't know about you, but for me, it's a first. In a moment, in what it represents for you, for me, for Rabbi Navarez, that I believe is worth remembering and holding on to and lifting up as one small step towards 
that which God intends for us and for all. As I thought about what I might say this evening besides my reflection on pictures, I found myself thinking about like, why do you invite me? <laughs> Maybe it's because we have been both friends and colleagues for nearly 20 years. Rabbi Navarro's faith encouraging mine, helping to make me a better Christian, and I hope my faith encouraging him, helping to make him a better Jew. As we work together to make our communities better and safer, not just for us and for our congregants, but for each and every person, feeding those who are hungry, providing a safe place for those who would otherwise be huddled outside, a safe place for them to sleep in the cold New York winters, sitting with elected officials and school superintendents to discuss how to respond to the anti-Semitic graffiti that was spray painted on one of our schools, doing our best to be a presence and a voice and a witness for welcome and inclusion and respect in the communities in which we lived and worked. Or maybe it was because our congregations worked together for so many years in Nicaragua, building homes for families who had been living in shelters made of scraps of wood and metal and plastic. There we were, rabbi and pastor, Christians and Jews, working side by side. But I don't think it was just the homes that were important. There was and is also this. Rabbi Navarez trusting a Christian pastor to help the youth from his congregation deepen their understanding of tikkun alom and what it mean, meant and means to live in such ways that to help heal the world that God has entrusted now to our care and keeping, just as I trusted him to help the youth from my congregation learn what it means and meant to see and to treat the other as neighbor, whoever that was in our communities, and so better learn what it means to love God. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it. Where did I put it? Maybe he just wanted another New York Yankees fan here to celebrate with him. <laughs> but in all seriousness, remembering so many of those moments and what they meant and how they shaped my life pushed me to think about it all a bit more. What was the reason, Jason, behind all of what we did? As I tried to find words to put around what I was thinking and feeling, I found myself turning here to the opening chapter in Genesis. Nobody has asked or will ever ask for my opinion, but I wish the opening chapter of Genesis was labeled prologue rather than chapter one, because I believe it was written and placed where it was in order to provide a lens through which we are to read the whole rest of sacred text. Written in the midst of the existential crisis of the Babylonian exile after Jerusalem and the temple had been destroyed and the king killed and the people exiled from what they understood to be the promised land, the question was, where is God in the midst of all of this? And out of that ruin and crisis and struggle emerged this incredible affirmation of faith. And it was good. I find myself wondering, Jason, is that a part of what we were holding on to as we did what we did? Knowing we are not there yet, but trusting that the promise and the possibility still lies before us, that God's intention for creation, the goodness often covered up, but still there is worth believing in and holding on to. And for today, is that how you and I are called to live? 
Is such an affirmation a part of what is needed, the lens through which we are not only to read scripture, but to see each other and to look out onto the world, even in, especially in the tumultuous days in which we live? I wonder. And as that opening prologue of Genesis 1 comes to a close, we read these words. And God created humankind in God's own image, male and female, God created them. I have to admit, I did pass Hebrew in seminary. <laughs> but the moment I got the grade, I pressed delete file. <clears throat> I have to admit I hold my breath offering a reflection on a verse from the Torah which all of you probably know far better than I. But what stands out for me in that verse is the word image. As I understand it, that word is related to the word that a sculptor is used for what a sculptor makes. The likeness created by an artist capturing something of the essence for the, sub the subject. Here's that, what that means for me. You carry in your being a piece of the image of God. And so does the person next to you. And so does the person next to them. So when you both, when you all recognize and affirm that, a bit more of God becomes present in our midst then multiply that by all who are here and then by all in the communities around you and then outward into the world that God entrusts to our care and keeping, how much more of the holy becomes visible and present and transformative when we see and acknowledge and claim that promise for ourselves and for all others. Jason, for me at least, and maybe for you as well, these words are among those which provided the hope and the courage and the strength to do all that we did together and more. And so my prayer for you, and my, my prayer for you, Congregation Beth Israel, is this. May these words from sacred text continue to turn you in the direction of what might be and of what God intends and continue to be the vision and the hope and the strength and the courage you need for the work God puts before you. And if I may, this, a 60-second postscript, an additional reminder and challenge for both you, Jason, and for your congregation. And I turn from the Torah to the prophets and to this verse from Micah. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? For most of my life, I thought of doing justice and loving kindness and walking with God all happened in parallel, all happened at the same time. But lately, I've come to think of this verse as sequential, one imperative building on the other. First, do justice and love kindness. Then as a result, you find yourself walking with God. So my charge to you and to all of you is this. Do justice, love kindness, so that you might find yourself blessed and walking with God into the world God continues to love so very, very much. Amen.